Ralph Davis and Rose Preston are the real deal. Here are some pictures that I shot last spring of Rose and Ralph in action. They distribute clothing and food and lemonade and hot soup every Wednesday evening and Saturday morning throughout the year, rain or shine. What follows is a little skit that Ralph did to try to explain what it's like to be homeless and an appeal for you to help as well. Thank you. Boy, am I hungry. You better believe I am. I can't believe this. The food came along. In a time like this, I haven't eaten since 2.30 yesterday afternoon. I can't believe you came along and there's even water to go with it. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And socks. I can't believe it. Brand new socks. Wow. Those are like gold. Boy, socks come and socks go in my world. And the best, the hardest part is keeping them dry. And uh, I have a little experiment here that I'm trying. I keep a bag over my sock to keep the water out. And it's working pretty good. But because I keep the bag on, it gets kind of sweaty in there. But to put on a brand new pair of socks, it's like heaven. Now, I imagine there's times when you had socks that were very uncomfortable and they might have gotten wet uh, from being outside. They may have been sweaty. They may have been really dirty. But just think, back, think about how good it feels to put on a brand new pair of socks. So for us, we couldn't be any happier than to get a fresh pair. It's interesting how a new pair makes so much more difference than a used pair, but we're happy to get a used pair. Sometimes I'll be washing my socks, I'll hang them up to dry, and somebody will steal them. And uh, I can't really blame them because we're all in the same boat. We like our socks, we want our socks. You may be wondering why I'm sitting here in front of you with holes in my socks and plastic bags, bags to keep my feet dry and filthy clothes and unshaven. I don't like myself this way. Give me a moment and I'll tell you my story. Katie and I met about 17 years ago and we met in a drug detox center and we made up our minds once and for all that we were going to get rid of the drugs, go clean, and we did. We ended up getting jobs, me for a machine sh in a machine shop, her at CVS, and we moved steadily along in a reasonably nice apartment. We paid our rent every month. We were, I guess, what you call respectable people. Suddenly, the house was foreclosed on. Out of the blue, we had to leave the house with our belongings, with the belongings that we had to get rid of most of because we just couldn't do anything with the, with the quantity. And we tried staying with some relatives, with some friends. They actually call that couch surfing. Uh, we move from place to place, but it can't last that long. So we am I going? So we ended up uh, moving into uh, shelters. We didn't like the shelters for several reasons. One, we had to sleep separate. Two, there are bed bugs. There are uh, a lot of alcoholics and drug users around, and there's a lot of theft. So we started sleeping wherever we could sleep on the streets. Um, Things started to fall apart very rapidly. For one, the car broke down. Without the car, I couldn't get back and forth to my job. I became, and I couldn't get enough rides, so I lost the job. And Katie lost the job because she couldn't come in with good hygiene. She, we couldn't always get to a shower. She couldn't always have clean clothes. So she lost our, her job. So we slept around wherever we could. Eventually, we ended up over the, under this uh, Route 95 overpass was horrible during the, the uh, summer, sweltering, no airflow. During the winter, you can only imagine how cold it was. But we got by by sleeping under a big pile of blankets and using each other's body warmth. So when we woke up in the morning, we were reasonably comfortable. Then one morning I woke up and it was like extra cold and I reached over and Katie was extra cold and she was dead. She died of an overdose <clears throat> during the night. Um, so the only, there's one thing of hers that I hold on to, and that's this secret deodorant because that was her special smell. She always smelled like secret, and sometimes I'll take it and just rub a little bit here, and I can still feel as if she's with me, even though that's a great fantasy that she could still be with me. Um, I somehow neglected to say that during while we were at the, uh, staying in the shelters and sleeping from place to place that we stupidly got back into the drug scene. It's so easy, it's everywhere. 
and I began and we began to do anything we could possibly do to get the drugs, including some stealing here and there. I got arrested a few times, spent a few nights in the holding cell, enough to give me a record. So now I'm stuck in the hard place that so many others are stuck in that <clears throat> can't get a job because of misdemeanors on my record. Of course, why would they hire somebody with a record for the same job when they can get somebody that has a clean record? Um, I've applied for uh, Social Security, SSI, based on my di my disability. I've got to wait for that. I don't have a place to stay. I don't have clean clothes to wear most of the days. Um, so I'm just walking around in a cycle, just walk, going around in a cycle, cycle, cycle. I wake up wherever I can. I can't clean up the way I'd like to. I spend my days just moseying around. I hang out with groups of people and sometimes you may see a group standing on a corner in downtown or whatever and you can tell that they've been drinking and they're acting like good old boys and they're laughing and it seems like they're having a grand old time and it might be going through your mind to judge them and who are they and they blah 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 whatever you may be thinking but I can say with all certainty that none of us are happy nothing nothing is funny we're just uh, passing through the time we're all in the same kind of despair we're all going through the same cycles of hopelessness. Rodney's story is only too familiar to me and others on my team. We're part of the Midnight Moment Outreach, and for the past seven years, we've been on the streets at night feeding people, offering them clothing, clothing, warm items, praying with them if they want, just being a friend in many cases. We find so many people that are desperately hungry, their faces filled with relief, they're so happy to get the food, the, the water, the hot chocolate during the winter. Um, some of them are so exhausted, some of them are just so underdressed, so many have shoes that are just falling off. Um, what we find the most though, one overriding thing that we see is just how desperately alone each person is, even though they may be with a group of other people. So to them, when we know their name, and smile at them. They smile because somebody took the moment to learn their name and to want to know them by name. Um, we sometimes see people that come over and they're all hunched up and tired and exhausted and by the time they they leave us you see a little bit more of a spring in their step. Um, a little bit more of their shoulders back a little bit. You've given them some nourishment. It's amazing during the winter how we see people uh, not so much lacking coats, but lacking gloves, the raw, raw hands of people walking around without gloves. We carry hundreds of gloves, pass out during the winter. We've seen hands so rough and raw and cold that we've had to, one young lady, we had to put the gloves on for her because she couldn't even bend her fingers. So we're out there relentlessly, uh, faithfully, not judging anybody because we see a lot of the people in the same situation week after week and sometimes year after year. Now there's three points that I'd like to leave you with. First point is, there are people just like us, just like you and me. They all have the same physiological needs that we all have. They all have the same emotions that we all have. And they all want the same things that you want and that I want. They want to have their perfect food, meaning whatever food is the best for you, is the, whatever food they like is what they'd like to have. They want to have the perfect shelter. You may live in a palace or a trailer. Where they want to live is where they'd be happiest. They need the perfect rest, whether you live on a Serta mattress or you live on a, or sleep on a waterbed. It's whatever they want. If you should be able to get what you want, they should get what they want. And above all, they need love, the perfect love, somebody that will love them and care for them and accept them that they can love back. The second point is many, many people, I've heard it all too many times, come up with statements like, they're that way because that's the way they want to be. You couldn't be more wrong. We have yet to find anybody that enjoys being out in very uncomfortable temperatures, freezing, sweltering or walking around with filthy clothes, unable to shower, unable to walk into a restroom, whatever they feel like it, uh, we, or to not be able to find a, restu a, a restaurant, to be restroom, to be hungry, to just have no meaning in their life, to just get through each day, wondering where they're gonna sleep, if they're sleeping outside, wondering if the weather is going to be accommodating for them to sleep outside. So, Anybody that wants to maintain that statement, they're that way because that's, what they, that's the way they want to be. Uh, put that right out, right out of their head. A lot of the people we see 
as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we see them week after week, year after year. Some of the people we see, many of the people we see are, are addicts, and so many of them we prayed with, and they say, please pray with me, please, 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 I want to stop this addiction, and we do. A week or two later, a month later, a year later, they're still addicted, they're asking us to pray, they're asking us to, co to console them, to spend some time with them. And to some of you out there in the prevalent way, they're like that because that's the way they want to be. Untrue, and I put it back to you, aren't there habits that you have that you know you should break, that you want to break? Whatever they happen to be, you know what they are, but you just can't break them. Your life would be fuller, fuller, happier if you could just break that, whatever it is that you need to break. So when you're pointing your finger at these people that are addicted that can't break out, kind of point back at yourself and recognize how hard it is for you to change yourself. The final point that I'd like to make is that you can make a difference. You yourself can make a difference. If you would open your eyes, look at the eyes of the people around you on the streets, look at them and just say to yourself, what would I need in that situation? That man's boiling hot, he's sweating. Boy, if I had a bottle of water, I could handle a bottle of water. Look at that woman or child or man with the ice cold freezing hands. If I had a pair of gloves, I could just hand them the gloves or a blanket. Um, it's un I, I was going to say it's unending. It's not unending, but the most important thing is whatever you think you would need is what they would need, and it's so easy to have a blanket in your car. When you see somebody on the side of the road, you call out, would you like a blanket? Odds are they're going to say yes, and they're going to say yes with this warmth and happiness and relief that's going to set you on fire, and you might want to load up your car with blankets to have them all the time, or a pair of gloves, or to have a couple of ice-cold bottles of water. You are instantly rewarded for your, for your <coughs> efforts by the looks you see on the people's faces, the gratitude, the relief, and they're reflecting right back at you because it's exactly what you would feel, exactly what you would want in that situation. So I'll leave you with that point. I'll rehash the point that they're people just like you. We are people just like them. We all want and need the same things. So let's go out there and try to open our eyes and give people what we would want. Thank you.